Okay, so we've run three spec kit commands so far, right? We've run constitution to set up the constitution file, which outlines some grounding, unbreakable principles for the project. Specify to flesh out a high level specification for a feature that we want to implement, and that created a new spec file for us and switched us to a new branch. And then the clarify command to help pad out some ambiguities, edge cases, and any areas that needed further clarification. So that was a bit like giving the spec a final polish before we move on. And I would say at this point, before you start the planning stage, it would be a good moment to actually read over your spec and make sure it's correct. If I want to edit the spec, now is the time to do it because all the planning, research, task generation and so forth is going to be based on this spec. So it's better to make sure it's right now than find out after all that planning and all the extra work has been done. So read over it make sure it's decent and if there's anything you want to change you can do that manually or ask the coding agent to do it and that's not to say you can't edit the spec later you can but because none of the extra planning has been done yet it just makes it easier to do it at this stage anyway i've read over my spec and i'm happy with it nothing else needs clarifying so now i'm going to move on to the planning stage and for this, we use the plan command. So forward slash, then plan. And then after that command, we can add some details as to how we want to plan this feature. So this is the step where you'd outline any technical implementation details, like maybe what CSS framework to use or a UI component library or any other third party service or API. Maybe you want to use local storage or a particular state management solution, a testing framework or whatever else it might be. This planning stage is the time to lay that out. So then, I'm just going to paste in a little snippet right here that says, plan this using Tailwind at theme for theme colors, local storage for goals, and shard CN for UI components. Use date FNS for date formatting, no unit tests, integration tests, or E2E tests needed. So this is pretty straightforward, and you might have more implementation details than this for your own feature, that's fine. But for what I want, this is good enough, I think. Now, before we fire this off, I'm going to close the chat window and then take a quick look at the plan prompt inside the specify folder over here, just so we can get a rough idea of what it's going to do ahead of time. All right, so inside this file then, we can see again that we tell the agent about the user import after that plan command and how it's stored in the arguments. And then it says, given those details stored in the arguments, do the following. So first it tells the agents to run this script, set up plan, and that script, which I'm gonna quickly open now, does a few things. Let me just find this script inside the specify folder and inside the scripts folder. And it's this one right here, the setup plan. So then I'm not gonna walk through every line again, but I just wanna highlight a couple of things. Right here, it uses a common helper function defined in a different script, which grabs a bunch of paths to different files and folders, such as the repo root, the current branch name, the feature directory, which is the same as the branch name, uh, the feature spec file, etc. And it also generates paths to new files in that same feature directory that this planning stage is going to write to. Anyway, after that, it checks what branch we're currently on to make sure we're on a feature branch. And if not, then we exit. Then somewhere down here, it's going to copy the plan template file from the template folder into the feature directory. And then finally, it's going to output a bunch of stuff to the terminal, which the AI model can then use if it needs to. So that's the main steps of this particular script for the planning stage. And now if we close this and go back to the plan prompt file, we can see that the next step is to check for any unclarified areas of the spec. And if there is, then the coding agent should pause and ask us about those before we continue with the plan. After that, step two is to read and analyze the feature spec to understand all these different things it needs to know to make the plan. Step three is to read the constitution file so it knows about those essential non-negotiable requirements. Then it instructs the model to start work on the plan file itself by essentially reading through the plan template and executing each stage in order. Now, as part of that, it should make several files like a research.md file for any research it needs to do and write down. This could be a research about best practices for using certain technologies, file structure, etc. It should make a data model for any kinds of data we have in the spec, in this case, for things like the goals data. And it should make some contract files for things like APIs we need to use or any UI components it needs to make so that instead of the coding agent going freestyle later, it has these contracts as clear guidance and boundaries as to what it can do do. It might also create a couple of other files as well as it plans. But once it does all that, it's told to verify its own work by making sure everything in this planning stage is completed. And then finally, it reports the details back to us in the chat window. 
And now one more thing before we fire this plan prompt off, let's just have a little nose at the plan template file, which is inside the specify folder and then within the templates folder. So I'm not gonna walk through this entire file because it's far too long, but if we scroll down a little bit, you're basically gonna see a list of steps the coding agent needs to follow to fill out this plan, do its research, make the data models, the contract files, and check its own work. And there'll actually be a checklist of stuff it needs to check off right at the bottom of the file somewhere. So we'll be able to see at a glance when it's done all of this stuff. And the AI itself will be able to verify what it's done using this as well. Also, when we ran the constitution command earlier on, as well as updating that constitution file, it also updated the plan, I think, to include any constitutional checks as well. So that when it's making this plan, the LLM has to make sure that those constitutional constraints are always applied to it. Anyway, let's close this down now, open the chat back up and fire off the plan command with our own input as well to get all of this planning up and running. <laughs> Right, so it's done all that and you can see all of these different files it's either created or updated so if we close these all off and take a look at them one at a time I'm not going to go through everything because there's far too much but if we go down to the specs folder then inside this one you can see now we've got a bunch of different files we've got the plant file plus all these other things like data model quick start research we've still got the spec file then inside here contracts we've got a goal interface file as well so if we just open up the plan file first of all and scroll down a little bit, we should see somewhere, yeah, we've got this constitution check, right? So it's basically saying that all of these must pass, right? So clean code, simple UX, responsive design, minimal dependencies, no testing, all of these were outlined in our constitution. So it's checked that and made sure that all of these are adhered to in the plan, which is good, all right? You can go uh, further down here, we've got the information about the project structure somewhere, there it is, so source, then app, and then we've got a components folder. So this is what it's planning to do. It's not created these yet, it's planning to do this. So we've outlined the different uh, UI components that we need, the layout file, we've got a lib folder, for storage, date utilities, etc. Then we've got a types folder for the goal. We've got a hook called use goals. Uh, then the public folder, etc. So there's a lot of planning in here. Again, I'm not going to go through all of this, but again, if we open up this file tree and take a look inside the data model, then you're going to see down here, we've got the goal right here with these different properties. So it's outlining all of the different properties a goal should have, like the ID, the title, the end date, status, created that, completed that. And it's also shown us in code what this enum goal status should be. So the type of this should be an enum. So this makes it really easy during the actual coding stage, I guess, for the coding agent to look at this and say, oh, this is how we're going to structure this particular type. And it does this for a lot of different things. We've got goals collections. Uh, we've got the different operations we can perform on goals. So it's outlining all of this stuff. And when we're generating the code later, it can easily look at this as kind of like documentation on how to implement these different features and these different data types. So this is really nice. If we look inside the contract folder, we can see we've got a goal interface as well, which is fairly similar. It's showing us all the different things we can use or rather different functions we can use for goal um, and some different properties, I'm sure, as well, some different rules. So we've got this interface called goal card props as well. So not only the goal itself, but for components to do with the goal, it's outlining the interface for the props. So it's saying that we can pass in a goal, which is a goal object, then a function called on complete and one called on delete. Again, this is going to make it much easier for the coding agent later to actually create the code because it has all this documentation in place. What else have we got? We have got a research file right here. So this is basically when the model is looking at its own kind of intelligence, basically things that it's been trained on. It's not going out onto the internet unless we explicitly tell it to, but it's using the knowledge that it already has to make decisions about what different things to use. So you can see right here, I mean, we explicitly said use Tailwind with the theme directive. 
Um, but it goes through different decisions and whites using different things for different features, etc. right here. Again, read this, make sure you're happy with everything in the plan before you go ahead because the next real step is to start making a task list for the coding agent to use. So we wanna make sure this plan is good enough for that next step. All right, so now we have the spec, which is the high level outline of the feature we're trying to implement. And we also have the plan now, which is a more technical outline of how to implement that spec. The next step is to turn the plan into a sequence of actionable tasks, and we'll do that in the next video.